simulating an ecosystem. What does it take to have a balanced nature of animals living and dying and starting the cycle again? We are going to take a look at it in today's episode of In 10 Minutes. This video took so long to make. Eight hours a day of just continuously getting data to support my claim. Now, this video is inspired by Primer, in which his link is in the description. All right, let's get into it. First, there are two types of species of this specific creature. For simplicity, it's a cube. One of these cubes is a hostile to any cubes that are not their species, and another that will not fight no matter what. Both of these cubes have the same food source, apples on a tree. Each generation, a cube must have one apple to survive and five to replicate its species. Similar to the evolution by aggression by Primer, if two hostiles choose the same tree to harvest, they both fight to the death. If two passives choose the same tree, they will share the food. If one passive and one hostile attack the same tree, then the hostile will kill the passive and therefore getting all the passive creatures food. This is very risky though, as if the hostile goes to attack the passive, it wastes a lot of energy and will lose 10 apples. So if the passive creature does not have more than 10 apples, then it's a loss for the hostile. Each tree drops a random number between 1 to 7 apples, so it would at least need to collect 2 trees before going on to the next generation for the hostile to get its money back from trying to hurt the passive creature. Let's look at an example of a simulation with just passive cubes. These are the specs. In each generation, 50 trees grow. One cube is placed in the wild for the simulation. So, let's run. As you can see, the number of cubes normalized around 110 to 120. Let me explain how this happened. In the beginning, there's only one cube and a lot of trees. This is called surplus where the demand is less than the supply and therefore causing more trees to grow faster than the cube can eat. From this knowledge, we can clearly see that the first couple generations all had enough food to completely replicate itself and have extra food at the end. At the peak, 533 cubes, it starts to dramatically go down. This is called shortage, where the amount of food is less than how many cubes there are. Similar problems today are happening as humans exponentially grow every generation. However, all these trees are harvested, so more and more cubes start to die off. At 20 generation, it normalizes to about 110 to 120 and finding the equilibrium. Let's see what happens with the simulation with just hostiles. Now the hostiles are a little different between the passive ones because the hostiles will do everything out of self-interest. The same rules apply, 50 trees, one hostile. Let's see what happens after 35 generations. Compared to the passives, the hostiles were nowhere near the, as well as the passives. The passives peaked at 533 and the hostiles at 300. How? Well, passives share food. So when there's less food on the plate, the ones that lived through surplus and got a lot of food gave it to the ones that didn't, thus increasing the longevity of the species. When the hostiles were simulating, they did not give any food to anyone else and therefore dying out sooner. Not only that, but they reached equilibrium 20 lower than the passives. This shows that passives live longer than the hostiles alone. Let's see what happens when we combine them. From this chart, you can see that the number of passives and hostiles are inversely proportional. The more hostiles there are, the more of a chance that the passives will be attacked. But didn't I say there was a huge cost? Yes, I did. But here's the problem. The 
passive has a 100% chance of dying if the hostile attacks it. But if the hostile can find enough food to survive by trees or stealing over 10 apples from the passive, then it can survive. On the graph, we can see that the deaths of the passives are directly proportional to the deaths of the hostiles, and therefore reducing both their populations. Having different species of one thing is never enough. So now, let's make a predator. The predator is a cylinder. For simplicity, it's white. These predators want to eat the cubes. The predators can eat passives with ease without a fight. However, to make the ecosystem more balanced, let's just say the passives grow a toxic cover over them so they can't get eaten. Now it just leaves the hostiles and the predators. If the predator attacks the hostile, then the predator will have a 99% chance of survival. The predator needs one to survive to the next generation and 10 to make a baby. Also, the predator needs to forge a decision whether to, to attack or rest. If the predator attacks, then they'll have a 1% chance of dying. Although that might not seem like a lot, it really is. It needs to eat 10 cubes to make one baby. That means for every baby, it has a 10% chance of dying. We're going to call this the happiness score. The different measures of happiness score is measured by the marginal benefit and cost. For all that don't know what it is, marginal benefit is a term in economics where it shows how much benefit they get per item and the cost. Well, the cost is how much to get one item. Let's see how this plays out. For this simulation, we get 200 hostiles and 5 predators. So therefore, the predators will have enough food to supply them for the beginning. If you saw, some predators stood still instead of attacking the hostile. They do that in later stages when they are sure that they can replicate themselves and have enough food for the next day. This is called diminishing marginal returns. Basically, every unit you get is a happiness score, but it keeps getting lower. For example, if you eat one ice cream cone, then you get 100% satisfaction because it's your first one. The second one might be 97% because you're starting to feel full, and the third, even lower, all the way until you're sick of it, which is zero. The same idea can be applied to the predators because why would it risk its own life for only one more when it has enough. What's surprising is that the predators didn't grow fast. They only reached 39 when they ate all the cubes. In the end, the population of the predators got way too high, so the supply of cubes got too small compared to the heightening demand. This was a very oversimplified version of evolution in an ecosystem. In a real ecosystem, there would be water, happiness for the hostiles and the passives, and much more. Now we need to talk about how to make an ecosystem balanced right now, because either the predators win in some cases, or the hostiles eat all the passives. Each of them will find their own natural equilibrium, so those are excluded from the theoretical research. Using math, and more math, and lots of experimenting, the final ratio for the hostiles is 1 to 15, meaning that there has to be 15 passives in one hostile for it to keep going for at least 500 generations. Same with the predators to hostiles, 1 to 1000 ratio, and the trees have to be 1000 as well. Now, there are some exceptions, such as if the predator somehow dies in the first generation, which is about 1 to 5%, then there are some issues. So I made invincibility for the predator so it has a generation where it can't die. I was also planning on making natural disasters, but it's too far too unlikely and definitely not relevant to my claim. If you would like to see me do this again, then I'd just say 25 likes again and yeah.